what I got here is the uh, lenses that I, I bought. Like I said, it's just a headlight lens. And this is what the primary looks like right out of the box. I'm gonna take these screws out. I had to go to um, Ace and get that same screw. It has to be longer because once you put that speaker on it, it's not gonna work. Like I said, that front one holds it tight up against this edge and the back one holds it up against that back edge. They say it's waterproof, but the main reason why I'm doing this is because the other ones are not waterproof. It would eventually get water running in the back side of the housing. Like I said before, you got this housing and the rubber piece gives it that waterproof effect. But I'm starting to believe there's no such thing as waterproof. This might be water resistant. That's about it. Anyways, that's how it is right there. Um, obviously the um, the screens come like this, but all you got to do is push them out, and they'll pop out like so. But what I did was. I cut some siding that I had from an enclosed trailer. So I made little brackets on the inside so when I screw it in, it'll fix to this. But like I noticed last time when I did the speakers, we um, it was a little too thick. So we'll see how this holds up. But all you primarily need is the, to hold it within. That's it. That's primarily it. And I feel like that'll hold up. We'll see what happens when I drew the uh, holes in it. But that's it and then the speaker is going to face the outside this lip is made this lip is made to keep it up again for the head like housing so what i did was to test it because obviously that'll be the side that faces forward and then that's how it primarily looks it's kind of tight around that speaker which is pretty good i like that look so like i said this part will go around the, the front lens of the um of the housing and then the speaker butt up right up on it against it like just like that and um that's what it looks like on the inside and i've already made little holes on the top so where i know where to drill it and i'll do that here in a minute i mean you get a lot of a lot of guys with bikes and they don't show you the secrets. They want you to go and pay for it, but you know, to each his own. Some people look at this video and they'll think it's really hard, which it isn't. And they'll pay somebody to do the work for them, but it's your money. You do what you want to do. I'm trying to save some of mine. But that's primarily what it looks like on the inside. And see how that was rusting all on the inside and then eventually what would happen was it would shorten out my wires and then on the back side of my speaker would get all rusted but hopefully what I'm gonna try to do this time around I'm gonna try to put some silicone in here and that way it'll be somewhat kind of waterproof let's check and see on the other one and see if it has uh, that same insert on it I figure if somebody Try to steal them. At least to have a shorter screwdriver to get in there and get them. Cause the thing would be faced like that, and then you have to get a screwdriver in there to get it. So that's why I put my screws on the inside. Yeah, it's a pain in the butt for me to get them off, but just putting this on here stops the honest person, not the person that wants them. The person that wants them do anything it takes to get them off. The honest person be like, "Hell, forget it." And that's my last one. Take that off, put that down. And then peel off the back side. Because that seal is holding it on. See how rusty that is on the inside? 
Hopefully you can see that. And then that's how I run it. See how I had that on the back, on the back side. And then when I went to just take it out just now, that's why soldering goes a long ways. That crushed one that I crushed onto it, the red one, it just slipped right out. So just think. I might think these are not working correctly, but at the same time, they just might. Pull that back through them. See that one isn't that bad. I wonder why. Wonder why that isn't that bad. The other one that was coming from all out of the top one. Sitting down here. I could see once it gets in and puddles in. But see that one's kind of sealed. So hopefully that um pocket that I put on there will help us out here. And see it's the same, it's the same as the one before. So what I'm gonna try to do is put some silicone. Put some silicone around there. And we'll see how well that works. I don't know if it's leaking in where the wire is, but we'll see what happens. And I'll put some silicone in there as well too, but I'm gonna try to silicone the entire back piece. I don't really think anything's coming in from the bottom portion right here. But as you can tell, if you put it like this, how it's mounted, it seems as though the water is running in from this part here and then collecting in that area. What I'm gonna do, I'm gonna try this out. I'm gonna put caulking on it. But we'll do one like that. And I'll rub it in too, just in case. Most times when I do electric, I solder the wires because I feel like that's the best connection. It's kind of, to me, it's better than putting on the shrink wrap. I know some people just put on shrink wrap and feel suffice with that, but I don't, I don't feel good about that. The feel for what with the fire what I did was make sure it's up like this that way when you drill through it you'll have a that lip to bite through and another good thing you could do use the uh, speaker grill where you took the the insert out of the uh, insert out of the speaker cover and you could do it like that that's one mean take the actual speaker it's kind of bothersome, make a little holes. What I wanted to do was have the JL lined up with the emblem here, kind of, sort of. Well, obviously, it's not going to be great, but then just make a mental note of where those holes are. And I take my, I take my marker and mark it here. And that way I know what holes to mark it when I hold it up to the bottom here. A couple of seconds here. You can stack them on, each, on top of each other so it won't be on the ground. And that way it can support itself and you could kind of even it out on the bottom, on that bottom lip. And then take your drill bit and go through those holes. As you do that, it kind of grip bite into that rubber sealant. What's that? Take it off. And then just see if those holes line up with the little insert that you did. Already done the other side. So now I'll take the drill and press them through. Give it a little pressure on the back side. Let's see what happened. Let's see if I even drilled a big enough hole in it to go through. Mm-mm. Hold on. This isn't this isn't normal. 
We got it right on the first try. Oh my gosh, and the drill bit just barely went in there. So now it's pretty much, instead of putting a screw back there, that's pretty much tight. Ooh, look at that. And now I'll line it up on one of my holes and see how that goes. It feels so good out here. So good. What's today? Today is uh, Wednesday, April the 1st in sunny Florida. What the temperature's probably like, what, 75, but in the shade, man, it feels so good. It's got to be 60-something in the shade. And once I get one of these three, I believe it is. This is something, man. On the first try. Never happens like that for me. That's what it looks like. And then, see how it's kind of sort of lined up? Then we put the screen on it like that. And that's primarily one. I hope that stay, yeah, it's clicks in. That's pretty good, I like that. It looks pretty good. Can't wait to see what it sounds like though. That would be even better. All right, we got the, um, the headlight housing and I finally got those screws in that was a pain in the butt man trying to get those screws in there now that you've secured it onto the rubber seal and then just put it on attach that make sure the rubber seal goes all the way around the housing And that's that. You remember too, once you put the outside lips to draw it tight, it'll get straight. And you won't be able to cosmetically see it, but it'll be up like this. So you want your JL symbol down at the bottom. All right, here we go. The housing comes with this screw on the top, which is awesome. And then I'm gonna try try this out. I'm gonna put it in differently than I normally run them. On the other side, I have it like this. Up like this. Grab the washer. How that go? Yeah, I think that was it. Just that little bit of noise. There it is. There it is. Here it is. Lock that in. And it comes with a lock wash on it too. So that helps you. You don't have to put any lock tight on it or nothing like that. You got this a nut and then a lock wash on the tight on the bottom. tighter you get I don't know if you guys can see this or not but the tighter you get this piece right here starts to curve keep tightening keep tightening keep tightening until it gets tight enough and I already took out the chrome piece that was back here behind the housing and take those screws that we soldered and all that good stuff. What is that? Slide it up in the hole. And then what I noticed on the other side, I squeezed this black piece in there, which it took a little time to get it up in there, but I feel like if you can get that in, that'll help you with your weatherproofing. Then again, I don't really believe in weatherproof, and I think it's called resistant. Nothing's waterproof. Once you get it in so far, you should be able to grab it and pull it through. 
I feel like the more more you get in, you can see how that kind of is unseen. If I had more of that chrome stuff, that would be awesome because then it actually look like it's chrome. That's what it looks like inside profile. Grab by a speaker and we can plug them in. I did this on the other side too. what I call grunt type. Actually, you could use those grunts for torque. They got the torque wrench. You know, a little grunt, a lot of grunt. But anyways, here we go. More that wide through. See how tight that is. Much harder to get on there than it was that other one we just had. And I'd rather for it. I prefer it to be that tight than to be loose to better the connection. We're going to go all the way down like that. The real one is just as tight too. All right, swivel it a little bit. Keep your whip a bit. Things a little tight. That way they won't be in there loosely. Then I put the far side, the far lip on first. Is that way I can't see on that side so it's much better and then just roll the lip over as you go around and there it is just line up that JL sign kind of with the, with the piece that holds it on then we'll come back oh, weatherproof it then you, if you decide to do this, you have to get longer screws. These are not the screws that come with the uh, set. Gives you a much cleaner look. Where well, you can't see the hole in the screw. Leave it slightly loose, that way you can spin it. Got, a, got all that put on and everything's tightened up. See, I put the screws on the inside. That way you can't see it, it gives you a good clean look. Then you got the lens that comes on it. And that's about it. Does a little snap in. And that's it. That's what it looks like. I hope it sounds really good. But that's that. And there's the other side. And side profile. And then if you come down low, like you could barely see. The black piece right there coming out. If it was chrome, I think about getting some chrome in there, and that will kind of look clean. But that's that. All right. Lastly, that's what they look like from that profile. And then on this other side, but that's what the new updated cans look like.